Hey everybody. I turned the lights on this morning. I actually saw the shrimp that I had put in this tank yesterday was out and about crawling around. So I went down to get my camera and of course by the time I got back it was gone again. And so I've been standing here for a while watching and she finally came out. Now, this morning when I saw her, I didn't think she had any eggs with her. I thought that she had lost all her eggs. And now that I'm looking at her again, I can clearly see her eggs. And you can really see what she's doing now is she's oxygenating the eggs. If you saw all those little feelers flipping like that, she's actually circulating fresh water over the eggs when she does that. So that's pretty interesting. I was concerned when I brought them from the other tank. I just transferred uh, the day before yesterday. I brought several of these guppies and that shrimp up from one of my tanks in the basement. And the water chemistry is significantly different than it is in this tank. Uh, in that, it's got a lot more dissolved solids in it. I honestly don't know uh, what the water hardness is in that tank or what the salinity is. But it's dissolved solids is probably 1,300 parts per million uh, or somewhere in that neighborhood. And this tank probably has somewhere closer to 300 parts per million. So regardless of what the actual chemistry was, I was simply concerned about the osmotic shock. When you go from water that's got a specific gravity uh, or, a, or a dissolved mineral content, total dissolved solid content that high, and then you drop down into water that's got a very low dissolved solid content. Um, it has to do with the way the fish osmoregulate. And osmoregulation is the process by which the fish regulate how much water moves in and out of their cells. Because just like us, fish need fluids in their body. They need water in their body. And they need the correct amount. And they need the correct salinity. And so that's what osmoregulation is. Depending on the salinity of the water, the fish has to make adjustments within its own body because the water inside the fish's body can't necessarily be the same as what's on the outside of the fish's body. So that osmoregulation is how the fish or shrimp or any kind of aquatic animal actually regulates all that water moving in and out of its body. And the dissolved solid count or the salinity of the water has a lot to do with how that process happens. It's not a passive process, but the passive part of the process does make a huge impact. So in other words, it'd be like gravity is pushing something down the hill anyway. But if you've got something bigger, then it's going to be even easier to do. And with the dissolved solids in the water, when a fish is trying to osmoregulate the natural processes of osmosis are already trying to have an impact and then the fish's body has to actually either work with the osmosis or work against the osmosis to keep the fish's you know body fluids at the proper uh, internal salinity so all of that was just an elaborate way of saying i was really worried that going from a lot of dissolved solids into a very low dissolved solids was going to result in the fish or possibly the shrimp over hydrating very very quickly and that would not be very good for them so i did acclimate them i acclimated them reasonably slowly i didn't go by any formula or anything i just put a little bit of tank water into the you know old tank water and i just kept doing that every 15 or 20 minutes until i just felt like i had done it enough after about two hours i went ahead and poured the fish into this tank uh, from the water they had been in and the only real concern I had, the only thing I thought might go wrong with the transfer process would be that the shrimp would lose the eggs. I figured that either one of two things was going to happen. Either the shrimp would lose the eggs simply because of the osmotic shock and the shock would actually just cause the, the shrimp to just abandon the eggs and fend for itself basically. Or the osmotic shock would affect the eggs specifically and basically render them untenable and then you'd have you know basically dead eggs that she'd be carrying around and that's still possible the the osmotic shock to the eggs may have killed them and she's still just carrying them around i don't know uh but we'll have to wait and see now i'm also fully aware of the fact that there's probably not going to be many survivors if the eggs even do hatch because of all the little fish in this tank 
are going to gobble them up. But having said that, this is a 20 gallon tank with lots of places to hide. And the tank I pulled the shrimp out of only has about six or seven gallons of water in it. And it's got about the same amount of fish condensed down into that six or seven gallons. And I've had shrimp that are in there for years and years and they're breeding away. Now I'm not overrun with shrimp, but shrimp do survive. I've obviously got shrimp that are still in there and growing and breeding and surviving. So if some shrimp can survive in there and keep breeding, then the chances of shrimp surviving in this tank are probably pretty good. They're at least better than they were in that other tank. And it's really interesting to see how active the shrimp is. I was watching last night and I just never saw it. I was beginning to wonder if it was dead. And this morning I was actually looking for its dead body because when a shrimp dies, uh, they turn really white or sometimes they'll turn a little bit pink and they just become really easy to spot. These ghost shrimp, or sometimes people refer to them as glass shrimp, it's the same species. Uh, in fact, it's probably a whole bunch of different little species that are all really similar and they just get lumped into being called ghost shrimp or glass shrimp. But yesterday when I was looking around for it, I couldn't find it, and I was beginning to get a little concerned. So I was really happy when I turned the light on this morning. And as I was saying, when they die, they become a lot easier to see. And that's what I was looking for this morning, a big old white, you know, cloudy white, pinkish-looking dead shrimp floating around in the tank. And as I keep saying, I was delighted to see that not only is she still in there, she's still got her eggs with her. Now, cross your fingers as to whether those eggs are still viable. And then if they are still viable, we still have a long way to go to get any of those shrimps to adulthood. But, you know, we'll see. She's still got them, so that's the first step, and that's a good sign. So there you go. There's my second day in a row. Quick update. I do have a fish in quarantine right now. I don't know when I'm going to bring it up. It is starting to look better. Its color's coming back a little bit. Its behavior's starting to be a little more... Um, fish tank like you know it's not constantly hiding and cowering it doesn't dash away every time it sees me walking around now it's getting kind of used to my presence um it actually comes out when i feed it now and it, it knows what food is it goes right after it it's feeding regularly so i was getting a little concerned there for the first few days it seemed way overstressed for what it should have been but it's calming down quite a bit and its color starting to come back so probably not too much longer, and we're going to be getting a new fish in this tank. It's nothing crazy or special or anything like that, but it'll be a nice fit for this tank. It'll look great. It'll be about the right size, and it will complement those guppies very nicely. And over time, maybe we can even work on adding one or two more things in there. Maybe i get some neons in there, add a little splash of color, uh, a little vibrancy or something. Maybe I'll put some Raspora Hets in there or something. I don't know. Uh, we've got options. But anyway, the shrimp is still living. The shrimp still has all of her eggs, and that was the whole purpose of this video was to give you a good look at her just to reassure you that she survived and everything's going well and with my male to female ratio with the guppies in this tank it's probably not gonna be long before i got a bunch of little baby guppies swimming around in here too so you can always look forward to that so there you go make sure you're subscribed you don't want to miss anything i got coming up you never know what it's going to be with me don't forget this one here is my 20 long open topped office tank so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you real soon in the next one